Hello, everyone. My name is Selan Zaili, and I use she, her, hers pronouns. I am the program coordinator at the Center for Student Diversity and Inclusion. This semester, CSDI received a grant from Cleveland City Foundation for two years to add a new initiative called Wayfinders Program. Wayfinders will aim to improve the professional readiness of the students seeking internships, employment, and graduate education. I aim to match the students with the micro internships next coming semester, so be on the lookout. Micro internships are short term projects that are paid and last between five to 40 hours. These projects will help students expand their knowledge, skills, and networks. To prepare the students career ready, CSCI holds workshops. This semester, we had two workshops already done. First one was navigating microaggressions and second one was next gen generation fashion in the workplace. And you are watching the third one with Gina Tellerico. Gina is a graduating senior majoring in psychology with a minor in theology and religious studies. I met her, gosh, a couple of years ago. Uh, actually, I, I had the pleasure of working with her sister and they are both wonderful. And I was so glad that I was actually able to work with both of them. Right now, Gina is a serving as a peer advisor in the Center for Career, Center for Career Services and Research Assistant for the Psychology Department, as well as the interning in the CSDI office. So I'm gonna pass my virtual microphone to Gina and we will talk about an online interviewing era. As our workshop is focusing on how we kind of speed interview and online interview tips in the process. Gina, microphone is yours. Thank you so much, Selene. And I know I feel like I met you three years ago now. I'm already graduating. You're almost done. So time is just flying by. So thank you for letting me do this with you. I'm really excited to talk about online interviewing and online presentations. So Selene already went through about me. Um, so thank you for that wonderful introduction. So objectives. So I have three main objectives for this presentation. So the first one being just gaining an understanding of the basics of online interviewing and how to really give a great online presentation. The second one is preparation, so learning how to successfully conduct an online interview or presentation. And the third one is really um, leaving this presentation with some key tips and takeaways to having your arsenal as you go on to conduct a great online interview. So I have a question just to think about for a second is, have you recently had an online interview or presentation in the, new, in the near future, you know, for a job, for a graduate program, for an internship, or have you had one in the past? So maybe, Celine, you want to talk about any experience that you've had recently? Absolutely. I feel like every Zoom call or every, Zoom, uh, every video camera on, I try to make sure that some basic rules but one of them is like you know I look at make sure that my phone is off and you know it's um, I have classes on zoom I in I talk to employers for the micro internships on zoom I talk with other departments at JC on zoom it's kind of like what is on my background I always try to make sure that it's very appropriate for visually so yeah I feel like every zoom call is kind of an interview anxiety for me too because it's just a process being a present in front of people. Yeah, I definitely agree, especially with the semester being all online. It's just, we really were thrown into online interviewing, online presentations, Zoom, everything's online. Um, so I feel like we're all kind of used to it at this point. And especially for me, as I'm preparing for graduate school, I've really been trying to be online interview ready cognizant of um, all the preparations and things I need to do because those are really important interviews. So I have to look my best despite navigating all these technolo technology and things like that. So thank you for that. Okay, um, so because of COVID, as we talked about, uh, now more than ever, people are, are interviewing job candidates online as opposed to in person. So from this survey, 80% um, of recruiters said they have been using video for interviews. So that's a lot. Um, and I think, too, this could be a new normal just because it's really convenient and it's easy. So you don't have to waste time traveling or setting up time in your schedule when you can just do it online and be done with it. So I think that could be what our future would look like. 
I agree. And also, if you're watching this, don't forget our most of the my position is going to be remote. So all of your interviews and all of your it's going to be via remote or via webcam or via phone call. So that's the recruiters are looking for how present you are in front of the camera. That's a really great point. Okay, so just jumping right in into how to prepare for an online interview. Um, I basically have about 10 steps or so for you to consider as you're preparing. So the first one is probably the most important, but having um, a computer or a webcam ready, whether it's your laptop, iPad, or tablet, um, making sure you're really comfortable and familiar using that device so you're not going in blind and never used it before. And I think also along the same lines, making sure they're charged and ready at the time of the interview because it would be horrible if your device just died and you didn't have anything else ready. Also on the same line, just making sure you have a stable internet connection. You know, try to test the location beforehand if you can. And if you think it's not that good, consider investing in a hotspot or maybe going to a library or coffee shop or even a friend's house if you can, if they have a better connection. And also too, just really making sure you're in a quiet location, uh, eliminate any loud or distracting noises. So nothing is really distracting during the interview and it's just you, yourself, and you're ready to go. Next is position and dress. So in terms of position, what I'm talking about is making sure you're not sitting too far away from the camera and you're showing like your upper chest to your head and also making sure your head isn't cut off. And dress is kind of self-explanatory, you know, business professional or casual, you know, making sure you're fully clothed, um, even though they're seeing top of your head, you know, make sure everything down there is good as well. No pajamas, no t-shirts, nothing too low cut, nothing inappropriate. Yeah, absolutely. And also I was thinking if you watch our previous workshop is that we focused on don't forget to wear something at the bottom. So please don't forget to wear something at the bottom um, because even that you're on visual on the face and body, you may never know that if something goes wrong and you may have to stand up. So make sure that you are fully dressed for the interviews or any virtual preparation that you need to do. I've seen too many viral videos of people in online interviews and they're not wearing anything else and Accidents happen, so that's a great point to emphasize, Selen. Next is looking level. So what I mean by this is making sure the camera is not too low, so you're, it's not looking up your nose or too high as if you were taking a selfie. Um, you can do this by propping up a laptop or webcam on a stack of books. That's actually what I'm doing right now. Um, it really helps also too with your posture, so it's making sure that you're looking level, you're sitting up straight, you're not looking down. Also helps with your back pain too, because if you're looking down all the time, you're gonna get some back pains. And next is smiling. So smiling, uh, people can hear a smile. It projects your confidence. It really communicates your willingness to be part of an interview and your excitement for the opportunity. Um, so making sure you're looking at the camera and not just at the screen. And some ways to um, avoid looking at the screen, like looking at yourself, is to maybe turning off the self view on Zoom so you're not tempted to look at yourself. Um, using active speaker mode on Zoom or even putting like a little sticky note or a smiling face by the camera so you know to look there and not at the screen. I agree. And then I have note, for example, that says slow down because I tend to talk so fast. And I need to slow down when I'm talking. So that's my note next to my camera. Smile and slow down. That's a great reminder. Okay. Lighting is next. So natural lighting is best. Perhaps doing this with a window in front of you or a nice light source in front of you. And also not having your back uh, to a window or a lamp because that will drown out the lighting of your face and you won't be able to see. Um, I have some examples in later slides, and this will make a little bit more sense if, once you see it. Additionally, no virtual backgrounds. So I know they're really popular on Zoom and on Google Meets, but they really are distracting and they do detract from a strong presence. And they also can glitch and your head can pixelate. This has happened to me on a call with my friends before where like half my hair is missing and it's just, it's really funny, <laughs> um, but not, uh, not appropriate for an interview. Instead, you can pick a neutral background, 
perhaps having an office space behind you, bookshelves, a plant, or even just a blank wall is best. Notifications, so muting your desktop notifications as well as silencing your cell phone. As Ellen talked about too, I think we're all kind of used to turning our cell phone off or turning off any ringers during a meeting because you don't want it to go off. But also really being mindful of this, especially if you have to share your screen for something because you don't want to risk anything popping up on the side. Okay, so we're at our last few preparations. Paper and pen. So having a paper and pen, I have one with me right now. I always do. Um, this is so you can take notes, write anything down. Selen does too. <laughs> um, this way you don't have to worry about changing your screen or typing, which could be really distracting. And um, something else to keep in mind is making sure you're not shuffling through them um, while you're in the interview because it creates noise and it could create missing beats in the conversation. So just be mindful of using a paper and pen. I, at the end of the Zoom call, I always switch the page or kind of like line it up to make sure that, okay, I am on the next page or next lineup. So I know that I am right there. So I don't shuffle it through. But you need a paper and pen because you may th think of something that you need to work on or you may think of something that it's a great idea. It comes to you. So you can just write it down really quickly. That's a really great point. And I like that tip about changing this, uh, flipping the page every single time you have a new meeting, that's really helpful. Using a strong voice, that's next. So what I mean by this is avoiding updoc, and that's when you end sentences as if you were asking a question. And also really be mindful of your ums and your likes and making sure you're not trailing off. Also too, this includes making sure your audio quality is good and try to test this beforehand with your tablet or your iPad or computer if you can. Last but not least, we have being stable. So this means a lot of things. It uh, mostly means, you know, keeping your posture straight. And you can think about this, if, I think if you had like an invisible string from the top of your head to the ceiling, kind of pulling you up. So relaxing your shoulders, pulling them down, and just looking straight at the camera. And, and along with a strong voice and being stable, just being confident. Um, you really want to establish a relationship with the interviewer as best as you can, even though this is online and just solidify your knowledge of the company or organization that you're interviewing for. We have a saying, sit like if you swallow a stick. So like kind of straight up. There you go. <laughs> it gets the point across. So the next few slides are some examples of on my interview, interviewing good and bad. So on the first one on the left, you can see why this is kind of a bad setup just because he's behind a window and you can't see his face and that's you know that could be really tough if you're behind something and they can't even see you they can't see your face or you're talking so really making sure you have a good lighting source and on the right you can see it's not so bad you know he's in front of lighting you can see him he's got some good body posture but I would say maybe just better dress and I don't know what the occasion that he's doing this for, but making sure you're professionally dressed and having eye contact with the camera and you're not looking down at yourself on the screen. Here's some more examples. So as you can see on the left, the position of his camera is too low. You know, it's like you're looking up his nose and he's not giving you eye contact level and his posture is kind of hunched down and also, Sue, the background's a little bit distracting and there's a window behind him. But on the right side, it's a little bit better. So he's got great lighting, he's smiling, great eye contact and posture. Um, the background is a little bit better, but I would say if possible, maybe turning off the smart board if he's not using it, that way nothing can pop up and it's not too distracting. And making sure he's professionally dressed depending on the occasion. Last but not least, here are some star examples by the stars on the slide. Um, so in all of these, you have great lighting. The posture is good. They're sitting up nice and straight. Uh, their body is positioned well in the camera, so it's the upper body to the head only. Um, lighting is really good. The backgrounds are not distracting. So all in all, these are some great examples of what a good image, a projection of image looks like in an online interview. And they're really good to keep in mind as you're setting up for your own online interview. I totally agree. One one more thing that recently I came across a lot is that I I totally understand we are Zoom fatigued and we are 
like literally done with Zoom any longer. And one of the suggestions of turning the camera to a different direction or you don't have to look always to camera. That works if you're listening a lecture. That works if you're attending a speak speaker or attending a conference. They don't have to see you all the time. But if you are actually having an interview, if you have two screens, please, please make sure that you're actually looking at the one with the camera. If I talk like this and explain things, it, it kind of like disconnects. So please just turn your posture. It actually shows your body language shows even on the camera that you are interested in the position, you're interested in jobs or you're interested in graduate school, right? So if you are doing this, who am I talking to? Like you can't even see my face, my full face, you see my side. So turn your posture, especially for these ones, it's important. The rest, if you're attending conference speaker as a lecture, I totally understand to move the camera away from your face or just kind of look at the second screen if you had one. That's a really great point. And I feel like I only have one screen, so I wouldn't even think about looking somewhere else. But, you know, a lot of people do have many monitors at once. So I didn't even think about that. That's really helpful, Celine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Career Center. So for main information, you know, about what you may be asked in an interview or what questions to ask an, an employer, I'm going to refer you to all the Career Center's resources because they have amazing YouTube videos and PDF guides and things like that on their uh, YouTube channel in Handshake. So I am going to refer you to them for just the bulk of other interview things you will expect. However, I have some other final key takeaways I want to talk about as you prepare for an online interview. Okay, so just thinking about this for a second, what do you answer employers when they tell you, tell me about yourself? Slyn, do you have any ideas? You know, I'm going to tell you one thing is that one time I, I was actually interviewing for a position. I literally thought of something a night before because this question is very common and I read the, what they are, who they are looking for and what, what position am I applying for and how I'm going to differentiate myself in the position. So I kind of came up with something very, I am in a position of like ready to grow speech in like less than a minute and they were like love you <laughs> so i think this is like what you're applying for and just kind of like prove it brew the ideas in your head and it was sometimes writing it helpful but then write it down and see what what is different about you yeah, you hit the nail on the head that's great how it came to you the night before in your dream like you know <laughs> right when you really needed it but definitely this is like the elevator pitch. So thinking about ways to differentiate yourself and how you really align your values with the company. So again, uh, the Career Center does have a video on this, but I thought I would just touch on it because I think it's really important. So this is usually done in networking events or career fairs when in introducing yourself to employers. And you also could be asked as an interview just to kind of kick things off. So the goals of the elevator pitch are really to introduce yourself and to start the conversation. So as Celine said, hers was about a minute or so. So it's between like 30 seconds and a minute, just talking about who you are and why you're applying for this position and really emphasizing any prior experience that you have that maybe aligns with the company's goals or why you're really looking forward to the opportunity of working at this company or going to this grad program, things like that. Also too, if you can, maybe concluding the, uh, the elevator pitch with a question um, about the company or things you might be interested that they're working on just to show that you've done your research and that you're really looking forward to maybe working there. Recently, I was talking to one of our coworkers and they mentioned about like how we are interview we are being interviewed, but at the same time, we are interviewing them. I think it just resonated with me a lot because we are there to learn about the company's culture. And if you look at our Wayfinders program, it's about micro internships, right? In that micro internship, you can learn a lot about the company and their culture and how maybe in the future you want to work with them or not. So I think that don't forget that little piece of like questions, ask a question. If you have you, you should have one, at least have one question so you understand where are you working, who are you working with, and if you are good, if you like to be in that position. 
you just beautifully went to my next transition. Um, my lab <laughs> going into the tips, like Salon said, you know, doing your research about this company or organization or graduate program you're applying to, you do not want to go in blind. You know, you may so make sure you have questions to ask about the company things they're working on. You want to make sure you're knowledgeable about what they do, what they about, and what they're looking for. Study these notes and your research beforehand, but you can have them with you. Um, but make sure you're not relying on them throughout the whole interview, shuffling through papers or just staring away at the screen. So it shows that, that shows that you're not really prepared. Another tip um, is to update your platform. So I mean your resume, your LinkedIn, your handshake profile, your references sheet. Um, the Career Center again has um, great uh, writing guides and YouTube videos and resources as to how to update these things. Um, but make sure they're ready to go by the time of the interview in case you're asked for them. And also another tip um, that someone gave me is to make sure your voicemail box is not full and make sure your voicemail, uh, your message is not just the robot number telling you um, what the number is or it's not something you made when you were in grade school. <laughs> because if an employer calls you for an interview that you want to make sure you have a professional sounding message so they get uh, a great impression of you. That's a great point too and voice mailboxes get full very fast <laughs> so I totally that's a great point yes yes I totally agree strengths and weaknesses so I feel like this is an infamous question that people always get asked in interviews so again with the elevator pitch just being creative and trying to differentiate yourself um, in terms of the strength make sure it's related to the job or institution so for example, I work with children with developmental disabilities. So communication is a key skill, you know, both verbal and nonverbal that I really kind of emphasize that I do have in interviews with grad programs or jobs that I'm looking for. And weaknesses, those are a bit tricky. Um, so avoid the weakness that I work too hard because it's not really, they're really not a weakness. Um, you know, instead state an area of weakness, but then quickly talk about how you're improving in that area. Uh, so, for example, I have a hard time saying no to projects and presentations or just I, I just have a hard time saying no to people and I become overbooked because of that and then I'm not able to give 100 uh, percent to everything I'm working on. So really just working on saying no and advocating for myself is a weakness that I am actively trying to improve. I love how you said it. I'm actively trying to improve myself. I think that's very important to highlight. And I totally understand that you don't want to look like you're vulnerable in front of the employer, but that's okay. Showing vulnerability is a confidence. So you are building that, and it is okay to admit that you are improving something, and it's okay that you are not good at something, and it's okay. So it, having an honest answer will better than just kind of like a, an answer that is on the internet that everybody actually uses. Exactly, being very genuine and creative with your answers and yeah, making sure you're not just finding an answer on the end of it, like I work too hard, things like that. Okay, the fourth and final tip is following up. So do this the same day or at least 24 hours after the interview. And in this way, you're really showing appreciation for those who took the time to interview you and you're saying, thank you even though it wasn't in person. So if you met with multiple interviewers, send one note to everyone with the appropriate greeting. And again, the Career Center, um, at the end of their interviewing video, they have an example template of how to craft a follow-up or thank you note. Okay, so when you think you're finally ready, I suggest scheduling a mock interview with the Career Center. Uh, this is an especially great option because everything's virtual, so you'll be able to get a virtual practice with a career advisor or peer advisor as to how to have a great mock interview. And like anything in life, just practice, practice, practice. Set up your space, um, make sure all your materials are ready, and then maybe have a practice interview with a friend, professor, trusted mentor, just really being prepared from all angles. And you know, the more you practice, the more confident you're gonna feel the day of the interview. So, I agree. Yeah. Oh, one more thing on that practicing section. Just talk to your, some of your friends and make prepare some questions and make them ask questions to you and see how you answer. Like not in the same line, maybe ask, have, prepare like 10 and they can ask you like variety of questions and see how you answer. So randomize it. So 
Sorry, Gina, go ahead. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. And yeah, your friends are going to give you honest feedback. So that's what you need to hear. And they'll, they'll be able to help you. And I, mean, I think speaking in front of your friends is very comfortable in most cases. So that way, like you're going to get, you're going to have more practice talking in front of someone and getting great feedback at the same time. Yeah. All right, Lynn. That's thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I did learn a lot and we are going to de definitely put the Career Center's YouTube channel and their contact email with this slideshow so that you can have an access to it. And if you need to, you can look up what they have on their platforms and use them accordingly. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for Gina for your time. This was brilliant and great information, great resource for our students who are looking for graduate programs or employments. Don't forget to follow us. It's JCU CSDI on all those platforms. Look for a Wayfinders program upcoming workshops. We again, we have three of them coming in the spring semester and we will launch the program. So therefore we are excited to, that you will be part of it. Um, I again, thank you and we wish you a happy holidays. And don't forget one more thing that if you follow on our social media, we will have a giveaway. So be on the lookout. Okay. I don't want to miss that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Happy holidays. Thank you, Celine. Bye.